I guess maybe a little bit of information about Jack Johnson is useful. Uh, he was basically a 21st century athlete at the turn of the century. I mean, he'd wear these really fancy clothes and he had all these cars. He was married to a white woman and, and he had two white mistresses uh, in 1908. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't even really go now. <laughs> in 1908. Right? And I think maybe even more impressive than all of that, he had gold teeth. <laughs> he had like, gold fronts. 1908. So anytime you see a rapper pretending like he made that stuff up, Jack Johnson was doing it in 1908. <laughs> yeah, his favorite author was Shakespeare, too, and he taught himself how to play classical viol. His favorite uh, piece of music was Verdes of Trovatore, and he was also, hands down, the greatest fighter of his time. So I'm going to read maybe four or five poems in Jack Johnson's voice. This is called Battle Royale. Back then, they chained a bear in the middle of the bear garden and let the dogs loose. Iron chains around a bear's neck won't slow him too much. A bear will always make short work of a dog. Shakespeare said Sackerson did it more than 20 times to dogs and wildcats alike, and since most creatures are naturally afraid of bears, there wouldn't always be much of a show in the bear garden. So the handlers sometimes took the bear's eyes or put his teeth out to make the fight more sporting. I believe you need eyes more than you need teeth in a fight, but losing either makes a bear a little less mean. Once baiting was against the law, some smart somebody figured colors would fight just as hard if hungry enough. So they rounded up the skinniest of us, had us stripped to trousers, then blindfolded us before the fight. They turned us in hard circles a few times on the ring steps like a motor car engine before pushing us between the ropes. When the bell rang, it seemed like I got hit from eight directions. I didn't know where those punches came from, but I swung so hard, my shoulder hadn't been right since, because the man said, only the last darkie on his feet gets a meal. Prize fighter. I love horses because they outrun the fastest man. They are majestic, as stately as a Saturday woman before a party. Horses smell like what it means to be fast. Sweat and gravel kicked up on early morning runs, the in and out of breath like gravel in tired lungs. I groomed and raised horses from Texas to Philadelphia until one broke my leg bone with a back kick. Thanks to that break, I can't ride anymore. And even if I could, we got these automobiles now, and they can carry us a mile a minute. I'm getting the fastest one of those things I can find once I get my money together. I'm like an automobile in the ring. My fists work like cranked up engines. I've got the kind of elasticity other fighters dream about when I put them to sleep on the canvas. When I clinch a man, it's like being swaddled in forgiveness. When I hook a man, it's like being hit by frustration. I can't tell if these horses are happy or confounded by this new means of locomotion, but I can say with certainty my prize fighting cohorts are decidedly dissatisfied by my presence. Mm -hmm. <laughs>